Welcome to Diva Speaks Relationships Ministries. I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for stopping by. I hope that you guys will be blessed and encouraged by tonight's show. So my name is Angela Puerto Real. I want to go ahead and get the introduction out of the way. If you haven't had an opportunity to visit my website, let me encourage you and extend the invitation for you to do so. The website address is Diva dash speaks dash official.com once again my website address is diva the dash symbol speaks dash official.com now my website is a one-stop shop for all things diva speaks related for those of you who may be new to my platform i do have a relationship podcast by the same name i also have a relationship talk show by the same name, which is an hour long, which airs on Access 21. So again, the website will provide you all of that information as well as um, a lot of the older footage. Um, perhaps you may have not have seen it and it will direct you to my social media pages. I always invite the people who um, watch my program to follow my social media pages because it is there that I definitely provide daily encouragement, moments of laughter, things that are thought provoking, as well as a spiritual supplement of sorts as it relates to relationships. Relationships is my business, that's my brand, and now it is my ministry. Praise God, thank God. So before we get started tonight, because I'm filming this in the evening, I just um, left the office and I'm super excited to be doing God's business now, amen? Right. Okay, so before we get started, I thought that it, was, that it would only be befitting if I just offer up a little prayer before we get started. So, if you don't mind bowing your heads and praying with me, Spirit of the living God, we come before you tonight thanking you for another day of grace and mercy. Father, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice and who tunes into this show, I pray that they will be blessed and encouraged by this word, Father. In all things, we give thanks. We enter into your presence with the spirit of thanksgiving, and we are expecting a mighty move. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, Father, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. Yes, that even felt good. Yes, it does my soul good. So, as I have mentioned... Diva Speaks Relationships is all about relationships. So anytime you tune into any of my platforms, that is what I'm talking about. So tonight I want to talk to you about alignment. Mm -hmm. Alignment. Is your relationship in alignment with God's will and purpose for your life as an individual and as a couple? Is your relationship in alignment? So being in alignment is, is, is similar to, to unity. You know, you conform, you, you're on the same page, you know, you're going in the same direction. That's what I think of when I think of alignment. But the best example that I definitely wanted to um, illustrate is that of a car. Now, many of you um, have vehicles, right? Have you ever had your car get out of alignment? I know I certainly have. And the times that my car needed an alignment, there were a couple of things that was very noticeable about that. Number one, it was hard for me to steer my vehicle. The steering wheel was either too loose, that was back in the 90s. <laughs> and another time when my car needed an alignment, I could barely turn the steering wheel, okay? So are you guys on, on, on the same page with me, okay? So those are two indicators that your car is in need of an alignment. And then the other, the most um, significant um, sign, telltale signs of your car needing a, an alignment is if your car veers to the extreme left or to the extreme right. The car does not go straight or in the direction that you intended it to go. If you was to take your hands off of the steering wheel momentarily, just for a fraction of a second, the car could either veer into oncoming traffic or depending what's on the other side of you, you could roll down an embankment, 
slide off into a ditch, perhaps something, you know, not so good could possibly happen if you let go of the steering wheel and allow the car to veer off to the side. Much like that of our relationships, our marriages, it is so very important in these last days that we are living in, that we make sure that we are being intentional with our efforts and our actions, that we are intentional with being in alignment with God's will for our lives, especially those of us who are in covenants, if you're married. So what exactly does alignment look like in your marriage? Alignment looks like obedience. Mm -hmm. Obedience to the word of God. Let me just throw out a couple of examples. Husbands, the Bible admonishes you to love your wives as Christ loved the church. Are you doing what the Bible has instructed you to do? Are you handling your wives with care? Or are you being neglectful? Are you being a little bit reckless in how you're talking to her, in how you are being attentive to her needs. That's just a question for you. Wives, the Bible admonishes us wives to be what? Submissive to our husbands. Are you in obedience and in compliance with what the word tells you to do? Now, I know, I know there's a lot of new age thinking. And I know that today submission is about trust. But listen, when you took those vows, you indirectly told the Lord that you were going to follow those vows by adhering to biblical principles. So if you didn't make a wise choice with the person that you married, that's a conversation you need to have with our Heavenly Father. That's more reason for you to stay down on your knees so God can speak to your partner's heart, so that God can deliver your partner from whatever is causing tension or some misalignment in your relationship, in the marriage. Yeah, I know submission is really, really touchy. It, it, it is a um, subject that causes many, many people to disagree, but you can disagree all you want. It's in the word. It's in the word and it is not to be taken lightly. And let me just throw this out there. I don't want to offend anybody, but husbands, you are to be in submission too. God has instructions for you. Are you being submissive to the Lord? in how you are running your households and being the head of the households for your families. You have an obligation. Are you in alignment? Because you are the head. And if the head is not centered correctly, how will everything else flow properly? Everything has to come through the head, including God. So if God is not the center, of your household, if God is not the center or the head of your marriage, where are you going with it? Do you really expect the blessings to flow as they should if you are out of alignment and out of order with the will of God for your life and your marriage? Now, I'm just telling you what it looks like. Alignment looks like obedience and surrendering your will to that of God. What is God's will for your life? What is God's will and purpose for your marriage? That is just a question that I am posing to you that perhaps some of you may need to revisit so you can reshift your focus reshift your focus on God's business. Get back to the business of God. Get back to investing more time with God so that you can stay in alignment. People, Satan is so busy these days. Oh my God, he looks for any 
any type of entry point into our homes, into our families, our relationships, and our marriage. And you cannot take your hands off the wheel for a moment because he's looking for that moment to gain control. The moment that you let go, he gains control. But let me just push through. Following biblical principles keeps you in alignment with God, keeps your marriage in alignment. What does God's will say about how you are treating one another, how you handle conflict, how you go about resolving your differences? What does the word of God say about that? Okay, so here's what being out of alignment looks like. Rebellion. Rebellion is a surefire indicator that you're, ne you're needing a tune-up. You're needing a tune-up when it comes to applying biblical principles in the marriage. This is what it looks like. This is who I am. This is how I've always done it. You know who I was when you married me. I, I'm not changing. God knows my heart. God knows my heart. You have to stop using the Lord as an excuse not to change. You have to stop standing in the spirit of rebellion and expecting God to bless it. Rebellion is not acceptable in the kingdom of God. And it does not work well in a marriage. So that's the first example of what not being in alignment would look like in your relationship or your marriage. Going back to what it does look like, the opposite of that is, number two, not being in submission. Not being in submission to what the Bible has told you to do. Wives are to be submissive to the husbands. Husbands, you have a duty to be, submiss to be submissive to the Lord. You have an obligation, you have a responsibility. You are not to take it lightly. And for those of you who may be struggling with having your wives submit to you in the marriage and in the home, maybe they are acting out in the spirit of rebellion. My question I wanna pose to you with love is, are you leading by example? Is the example that you are setting for your wife something that she can look at and follow? Are you getting frustrated and then creating other problems out of frustration because you are not receiving the submission that you are expecting and you are requiring? Be the leader by example. That is my encouragement to you. For those of you who say, well, my wife is not submissive. She's not that type. I've asked her. We've talked about it. It just doesn't come naturally to her. Again, I want to reemphasize, are you leading by example? Today is the day to make a conscious choice moving forward. I'm going to show my wife how it's done. God has placed me at the head of this marriage and the head of, the, and the head of this family. So if I want it to be done right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to show her how it's done. Okay, moving on. Now here's a touchy one, but it needs to be talked about. Excessive arguments. Yes, I have my notes. I have my notes. I need my notes. Excessive arguments, not being agreeable, tension in the home, tension in the relationship. You're fighting over things and it seems like the more things that come up that you are disagreeing over, the harder it is to find the answer or resolution. Hmm. Sounds like that car, okay? It sounds like that car that the more in need of that vehicle to be, to go get an alignment, it's harder to steer, right? It's harder to keep the car on the road in the right direction. Much like the relationship of the marriage where you're having excessive arguments and it's getting harder and harder to resolve these issues quickly or it's getting harder and harder to come to an agreement, to come to a truce, to find the answers so we can put a stop to whatever is going on. That is a surefire indicator that the enemy has gained access. Somewhere, somehow, 
He's gained access. This is the time now to stand firm on your faith, get back into the Bible, get back on your knees together and pray that God delivers you a set of instructions so that you can put things back into perspective and put it back into its rightful place, which is in alignment with the will of God. Peace, okay? Peace needs to exist not only in your home, but amongst the two of you. How can you have peace if you're steady disagreeing over, it could be valid issues. It could be things concerning the children. It could be things concerning finances. It could be possibly, you know, about friends, about family, about work. However or whatever, these disagreements are coming about if they are excessive. This is a sign that your relationship needs a tune-up. You need a tune-up and we need to realign it with God's will for your life. It needs some attention, some TLC, okay? And if therapy or professional counseling is something that you, if you thought about it, could benefit the both of you, I would encourage you to do so. Don't shy away from counseling or resources that could empower you with tools to transition out of your season of struggle that is keeping the two of you bumping heads. That is not a God. Now, let's be clear. I understand and all of us mature adults, <laughs> especially for those of us who've been married and married a couple of times. Listen, disagreements come about. That's just a part of life. That's a part of any relationship all relationships, there will come a time that you disagree, that you're not going to see eye to eye. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just life. I'm talking about when you see it happening more than it should, when you see that where you started and where you are now, and you can recognize that you are not in a good place, you are not in a holy place, you are not in a safe space, you feel that something has shifted in the relationship and in the marriage, now is the time since that check engine light has come on, check it out. Let's take it to the kingdom. Let's take it before God. Let's bring it before God and let's go ahead and seek, okay? the answers so we can put this thing back together, okay? Put this thing back together. Yes, let me move on because I'll get stuck right here, <laughs> okay? Okay, now this kind of goes hand in hand with what I just said about the excessive arguments and not being able to come to an agreement, not even being able to say, okay, we're just gonna agree to disagree so that we can move on to calmer waters. If you have noticed, Okay, if you've noticed, if you've just had some quiet time to yourself in your quiet moments with God or when you're driving to work, when you've really been honest with yourself or with one another, if you've noticed that there's a lot of chaos, a lot of chattering, a lot of confusion, discord, and complaining, not only from others in your circle or in your ear who, you know, confiding you, but among different things, or you complaining. You've got that complaining spirit. You're complaining more than you're giving thanks. It seems like you're more upset and more dissatisfied. You're irritable. Just a bunch of foolishness. How can I say this? You need to check that out. Something, again, has shifted. The spirit of the enemy, if he's not there, he's close. And he is attacking your relationship. He is attacking your relationship. If you have all of this confusion and chaos and just a lot of busy, just busy, just really unhealthy, toxic relationship and conversations are being had around you or as part of your circle or if it has surfaced into your home and in your relationship, that is the number one indicator that the enemy has arrived. Okay, God is not the author of confusion. He is not. God is a peaceful God. Your relationships should be peaceful. And if you have, whether that be friends or family that have so much going on, 
we call it drama, okay? We call it drama. And sometimes it's not anything that they're doing to bring it to themselves. Sometimes people are living lives where they're not being attentive to certain areas and things start falling apart. They don't know how to handle things properly. And sometimes they are sincerely seeking your guidance, but that issue, that drama still is dumped on you. It's affecting you. It's affecting how you and your husband or wife are fellowshipping with one another. If you have found that that chaos, that drama, that confusion has penetrated, okay, the atmosphere of your home and your relationship, I want you right now to cast that down in the name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's get rid of it. Let's do some reassessing of our relationships, let's take some inventory of what we have and what we don't need and how we are going to start establishing boundaries, healthy boundaries, healthy boundaries, so that our relationship, okay, this holy covenant that we have can be protected. Be intentional with protecting your relationships. And if you, if those of you who have been watching my show for a while, you know that that was my first show here on the Now Television Network is protecting your relationship. And I have been, I've stressed that all across my different um, platforms, from my podcast to my hour long show to here. It is so important that in these last days that we live in when the enemy is using every available tool, resource, and person he can to attack the people of God, that you better be arm it up and keep your eyes wide open for those who don't know that the enemy is using them. Because I don't want to sound harsh because we're talking about people that we love because I am just going out on a limb and I'm thinking to myself, if they have access to you, if they're allowed in your home, if they are around you and your family on a daily basis, that these are people that you have a connection to. You have an intimate relationship with them. They are welcomed into your space. So I don't want to make these people sound like they're villains or vilify them. I'm just saying sometimes, even me, I mean, we all fall victim sometimes to the enemy's tricks. You know, we're not perfect. So in those instances, all I want to do is to encourage you to make sure that you're in alignment, to make sure that things that are being dumped on you or people that are coming to you with issues or problems or, or negative or, you know, different spirits that you put a stop to it or you find a way to distance yourself from those spirits, okay? Yes, okay. So the benefits, okay, of being in alignment, Having your relationship and your marriage in alignment with the will of God is the blessings come abundantly and they flow. There is favor that you find with God when you are living in his perfect will for your life as individuals, unique individuals, and as a couple. A couple, you stand before God. You know, the scripture in Psalms chapter 133, I believe it is the second verse, it talks about the oil being poured on the head, over the head, right? The cup of oil is being poured over the head and how from the head the oil flowed through to the beard, the beard of Aaron, and from the beard the oil flowed directly down to the garment. I use that illustration on my way to closing the show to let you know that when you are in alignment, right? When you are in alignment, how the blessings flow as they should. It's, it's an easy shot from the head all the way down. And I would want you to make sure that you are receiving God's best for your life, for your marriage, Okay, the enemy comes in many forms and you have to always keep this in the forefront of your mind. He's not attacking what he already has in his camp. If he is attacking you and he's looking for ways to penetrate your relationship and your covenant and to get you out of the will of God, there's something mighty powerful about that union. There's something very special about your marriage and your relationship. If he has eyed your relationship, 
if he has launched a full attack on your marriage, that is a bona fide indicator that there is something special. There's a purpose for that marriage. Please protect it. So I just want to go ahead and close out right there and just leave you with the final question of, can you afford to be out of the will of God for your life and your marriage? Can you afford to be out of alignment? I think all of us would agree and say a healthy and a heavenly. Uh, we can't afford that. I don't, I don't want to pay the cost of being out of alignment for God's will for my life and my marriage. I thank you for tuning in and stopping by to Diva Speaks Relationship Ministries. I, it is my hope and my prayer, again, that all of you are blessed, that you remain encouraged, and I pray that I see you back here next week. Stay blessed, stay connected, and stay in the will of God.